Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. I wanted to cover some macro news events in this video and take a look at the market and kind of reflect on them a bit. Now, I the more I trade with prop trading, the more I realize I think that these macro events don't really come into play in my type of trading, my short-term technical trading. And that in the past, I've put way too much emphasis on these things. They're still interesting. I wanna cover it. I wanna cover the election. I want to cover the news that's out there, the wars and so forth, and see how it might affect the markets. But keep in mind, it's not good to be overly negative or overly positive on the macro news, because when it comes right down to it, if you're a short-term technical trader, the most important thing that matters is your rules and following those short-term technical trades. So let's take a look at the markets first. Before I get into that, I wanted to cover uh, a little bit of my trip. I just got back from Kauai. It was wonderful. It was beautiful. I'm fried, as you can see. Had a great time with the family. And uh, I learned a couple things while out there. Well, first of all, it's, it's very, very expensive. This is my second time out on Kauai. And uh, this is basically the island chain here. It's the last of the big islands um, further east and north. And uh, it's it's very rural. There are chickens everywhere, lots of stuff to do. Um, but I went to the grocery store to, to sort of stock up on things. Prices there were ridiculous. I show you some pictures, but my camera got wet as I was uh, bodyboarding. I didn't realize I had it in my pocket. I hate when that happens. And so I was stuck and uh, all my pictures are gone. But I took some pictures of the prices out there in the grocery stores to show some of you guys. And it was crazy. Like we're talking $10 for milk, $10 for uh, cereal. And I asked the guy there, I asked one of the tour guides, actually. I said, hey, you know, how do you guys do it? Do you guys get special deals for locals out there? Is this just the tourist price? He's like, no, uh, the people here have four jobs just to afford a home. And, uh, and, and he had four jobs, he was telling me. And it's true that the ho the housing out there is ridiculously priced. It's like a, it's even more expensive than California. Um, impossible. A lot of people are just, it's all rentals. People buy it, rent it out. So the locals, I feel really bad for them because they're getting screwed, you know, and this is happening everywhere. It's happening here in Utah as well. People are coming in, buying up the houses. A lot of them are rentals. It's just on another level out there. It's extreme. And same with the uh, groceries. We've all experienced inflation, but in Hawaii, it's just another level of inflation. Very hard for the locals. And that's why a lot of them are moving out. Interestingly enough, Hawaii is the most, one of the most democratic states or Democrat states in the union. They voted for Biden 63% to 34, basically two thirds of the people there voted for Biden. Um, when I was there, I did not see a lot of Biden signs. I saw one actually, and I saw a bunch of Trump signs. So I don't know if that means, you know, I'm not expecting him to win Hawaii or anything like that, but I just thought it was really interesting. I wouldn't have expected to see that many, but they're all over the place. And so I don't know if that just indicates just more excitement in the Trump camp or what, as you know, um, if you've been reading the polls, Trump has been making a comeback and let's take a look at that. So this first one here is not a poll. It's actually a betting market. So you can go out on the Internet and you can bet on who's going to win the election. Right now, Donald Trump has a huge lead like it's it, to me. This is distorted for as close a race as it is. But apparently, but look at the way it's been trending. So you go back here. Trump has been um, winning Biden. Kamala gets into the race. She gets an immediate bump and she go, she goes ahead. Um, at the peak here, it looks like, you know, 51 to 45 and so on. And then, but that didn't last. And then it sort of went back and forth. And then since October, it's just gone. Trump has gone higher and higher. Kamala has gone lower and lower. Right now, the betting odds are 65 to 34, which again, to me, seems like too much uh, for as close as a race as it is. But clearly, Trump has the momentum now. Now let's take a look at some actual polls, not, not betting markets, but actual polls done by news outlets and such. So the polls vary depending on who does the poll. USA Today uh, leans more left. They have Harris ahead nationally among likely voters, but that's nationally. That's not, that's not including the swing states, which is what really matters. They've got her ahead 51 to 47. Um, 
this poll here looks like they've got um, her ahead 48 to 47. So let's take a look at some of those swing states here because that's what really matters. Trump has the lead in Nevada, just barely. We're talking small margins. It's dead close in Michigan, which is another swing state, 47 to 47.8. Um, it looks like, let's see, North Carolina was the other one. Trump has the lead there by a little over a point. Pennsylvania, Trump now has the lead by four tenths of a percent. And Wisconsin, uh, it's Harris by about a percent. So these are really, really tight within the margin of error. This is going to be chaotic. I mean, chaotic if it's so close to call and we go into like three days of trying to figure out who the president is. I can't even imagine what's going to happen. I just say, get ready for a chaotic year. I've been saying this for a while. I think we're going into a recession latter half of the year. I think we've got this election stuff coming. We've also got stuff going on with Israel and Russia. Let's take a look at that. All right, so to get you a little caught up on this, remember uh, last Friday, Israel struck Iran and um, they bombed several military targets. Now, given the amount of bluster and the amount of talk from Israel, and uh, you know they were they were saying things like they were going to hit the nuclear facilities they might hit the oil facilities they didn't this was not a strike designed to kill a ton of people it was not a strike to decapitate or anything like that i think it was just a message that they had to respond because iran attacked israel remember uh, several weeks ago i guess it was months ago now those um 180 or so missiles that iran sent to israel that was also a very understated attack that attack hit very precise targets. It was not meant to kill a lot of people. So it's just sort of this tit for tat thing. I don't think either one of them really wants a war with each other at this moment. That is good. I think I think that is why the markets are higher today because we've all been waiting for this attack and now it's kind of like, eh, you know, it was a tit for tat thing. It wasn't, it, it did not seem to escalate. Iran's response so far was like, well, you know, you didn't really hit anything, so we're not going to respond. At least that's the the feeling that the market is getting right now. We'll see what happens later. We don't know exactly what Israel hit, but it does not appear to be uh, a big deal in terms of what it could have been, right? It, it did not hit the nuclear facilities, did not hit the oil facilities, did not kill a ton of people. So I think the world is sort of breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief. Oil is down big, and we can take a look at that here and uh, see what's going on with oil. Yeah, so oil is down 4.6% on this news. Um, so the, the market clearly is, is just breathing a sigh of relief right now, and that's partly why you're seeing the NASDAQ jump up, already up 0.62% on a Sunday night. That's pretty good. I think they're just saying, ah, we're, it could have been so much worse in that war, though. That This doesn't end the war at all, of course. This just doesn't escalate it for now. Israel is still um, fighting against the, the people in Gaza, Hamas and Gaza, Hezbollah up in Lebanon. And that war is continuing to sort of escalate, but it is not escalating to Iran for now. Thankfully, Turkey and Egypt are not getting involved at this point. If they stay out of it, I think things will be okay. If if something else happens or Iran changes its mind and and says no, look, this is this was too much, then we can see further ex you know escalation. Right now, that isn't the case. So markets like it. So what about the Russian war? Well, I got to be honest, that ain't going so good. If you're a Ukrainian or if you're part of NATO, this is this has not been a good thing. We've got uh, North Korea will be sending soldiers to Russia. Um, this weekend, I guess. So a little bit of an expansion there, but Russia, tell you the honest truth, Russia doesn't need it. They are winning this war. They are gaining uh, like five kilometers a day and more. The Ukrainians are basically, they're overmatched. They're out of men. They, they Don't get me wrong. They've been great fighters. Russia is just too strong. And I don't understand why the news media is not reporting this. If you do a little bit of digging, and reading and just look at the maps. There are maps out there of territories that are in play and Russia is just winning those territories. So maybe after the election, you'll start to hear about that. Maybe it's one of those things where they don't want Biden to look that bad because it'll affect the election. But the truth is uh, Russia is winning this war. There is no way they're going to lose it. And um, we would be fools to start sending missiles into Russia 
and attacking them because they they know it's coming. It would be like, you know, we have to give the Ukrainians intelligence on where to hit. We have to basically control that technology and those missiles. Um, it would be like NATO attacking Russia, and they know it. And they said they would respond if we start to do that. So hopefully cooler heads will prevail and there'll be some sort of negotiation here. I, I expect that's what will happen. Ukraine can't go on like this, um, but but we will see. OK, and now to one of my favorite topics, silver. Silver spot price, $33.63. I love it. I love it. I've been saying now for months, anything under $30 is a great buy and I've been stacking it up. I'm talking the paper silver. I've also got some physical silver a little bit here, a little bit there, but mostly I trade in paper silver. I'm not I'm not big on physical. As I've explained before, I don't like the spreads and things like that. Um, so I've stopped buying at this point, but I do expect 35 and it looks like it just barely hit 34.86. So my first phase and then I'll have to rethink everything is once it gets to 35. Doesn't mean I'll sell. It just means, OK, I've hit my target. Now what? So we'll see what happens there. Taking a look at gold, 2,700. Wow. Just every, it seems like every week it's a new record. There's no reason to think it won't continue right now. Although everything has its ups and downs, right? We could be heading into that down phase, but let's look at, take a look at the silver futures here. And you can see the last few days, possible top here temporarily. Um, now, I've been saying for months, buy everything under 30. That's what I've been doing on the paper silver. It doesn't mean I'm going to sell when it hits the 35, but that's my initial price target. Okay. And you can see here, we are a little overbought in terms of technicals. Uh, but if you're long-term, you know what, just hold. There's uh, nothing has changed in terms of any reason that I would sell silver at this point. Now, this is what I find very, very interesting about silver right now. This chart here is the US dollar and trading against all other baskets of currencies. You can see the dollar since October has been on a streak. It has gone up pretty well here from 100 to 104. That's a pretty good rise during this period of time. Let's back out and look at the each candle being a week and you can see that that trend here has continued. So with the dollar going up, that would usually push pe precious metals down. It has not. Silver and gold are going up despite the fact that the dollar has been on a run. That is a very bullish sign for silver and gold right now. And that will go that will go into the factoring when I do when we do hit 35 of whether I hold or whether I sell and wait for a dip. But right now, um, dollar's been strong. What's been the weakest currency here? Uh, Euro a little bit. Uh, Japanese yen has been tanking um, pretty much everything else besides the dollar, right? So very interesting fact there. So when I look at this silver chart here, I, I do think there's more upside to go just based on um, the conditions for buying silver and also the conditions of the dollar at this moment. So finally, I'll just talk about my experience trading as a prop trader with Apex. Um, so far, it has been a good experience. Now, I can't recommend it yet. I haven't been paid for anything. I now have, I decided to go all in. So I've got 20 accounts, evaluation accounts. Four of them have now turned into PA accounts, which means I have the potential to get paid out for those. I haven't been paid yet. I haven't hit my targets yet. When I do, I'll let you know how that goes. And again, I'm not recommending them. It's too early. I don't know if the, if this is a, you know, a scam or uh, I mean, it looks good enough. I have friends who are doing it. They say it's a good thing, but for sure. And the reason I've kind of pushed forward with this is it's making me a much better trader. When I started at the beginning and saying that this macro news that I mentioned, I don't pay as much attention to that as I did previously, because trading for these guys, it's all about precision. It's all about, uh, you know, being able to, um, make money in the now moment of opportunity, right? This very moment and not just place a trade and think, well, maybe it's going to go down tomorrow. You know, you have to be technically right on spot. And that's what I've been doing lately. And uh, it, it's made me a better trader. So from that point of view, I'm really glad I did this. Whether or not it turns out to be some big thing and I get paid a lot of money, we will see. I'll keep you informed on that. Remember, the whole purpose of this video series, the reason I created it was 
I wanted to replace my job with this amount of, of trading. I want to make over $200,000 a year. And, uh, and by the way, I'm getting, I'm getting there. Um, my trading has been going really good. I'm up to around $350 a day. Um, I want to hit maybe $725 a day to $750, but I'm getting there. And if this works out, that'll take me there because you can make a lot of money prop trading. By the way, guys, count your blessings. I mean, when I was in Kauai, there are so many homeless now that are living on the beach. Some of them by choice, right? Some of them are like, hey, if I'm going to be homeless, I'm going to go to Hawaii and live there. And I could see why. But some of them are really just being priced out of, of housing. It's incredibly expensive. The food is incredibly expensive. And like my tour guide, Brian the Hawaiian said, you know, a lot of guys are working four jobs just for a grass hut, you know, just to live on the island because they love it so much. So anyway, count your blessings. It's uh, if you're in good shape right now, there are many people who aren't. So just leaving that with you. And I'll be back with another video. I'll talk more about this another time. Thanks, everyone.